This small bottle has a cylindrical tubular neck and a bulbous vessel body. Between the two, there's a slight indentation with tool marks. There's an inner folded rim. At its base, the punty mark is a circle. It's sometimes called an annular punty mark, and it indicates that the vessel was held by flipping it around and touching the base to the glass left on the blowpipe, the moil. A small gather is made on the end of a small blowpipe. The glass is elongated with gravity and then lightly rolled on the marver, the metal table. This elongates the glass and makes it cylindrical. I've attached a blow hose. This replaces an assistant blowing when I might ask for air pressure. And this is so that while blowing I can change the angle of the blowpipe and begin to shape it with tools. So the neck is initially formed with gravity. The articulation is made between the tubular neck and the vessel body. This leaves the characteristic tool marks. And the tube is pulled a little bit longer. This is a constriction made near the blowpipe. This will help separate the vessel from the blowpipe later in the process. The body is blown a little bit bigger, the neck pulled a little bit longer, the bottom flattened, and while the bottom is still slightly soft, the vessel is broken free of the blowpipe, flipped around, and the bottom reattached to the moil, the glass left on the end of the blowpipe. After reheating the edge, a conical tool is used to push the edge inward. This begins the folded lip. And after a little more reheating, the jacks are used to give the rim its final shape and to give the tubular neck its characteristic profile. After flashing the vessel in the furnace to make sure everything is the same temperature, the blowpipe is given a hard blow and the vessel breaks free, leaving the characteristic round or ring punty mark. It's sometimes called a ring punty mark or an annular ring punty mark.